welcome to this morning's Meeting House live stream online experience. My name is Chris, and it's so great to be able to be with you in this hosting capacity. And I trust that if your week was tough, that this morning will start the next week off on the right foot. And if your week was pretty decent to A-OK, -okay, that this would only um, enhance and confirm that things are going in the right direction. Uh, sometimes I mumble and sometimes I say things. Either way, what I'm trying to say is it is really great to be able to spend time with you and to be here with you in this sacred space. We wanna make sure to make time. This is why we gather. We wanna make time to center ourselves in with Christ and with one another. We want to allow him to speak into us, speak to us, and also speak through us to one another. And the ways we can do that, at least for our community, on a Sunday morning capacity, is either in our YouTube chat, which you can use right now, or on our Discord server. Those are two great spaces where you can get to know new people, encourage people, um, share a little bit about what's going on in your life in a way that um, encourages them, and ultimately somehow also encourages you. There's something about when you give of yourself to somebody, that also speaks into your life as as well. So you can use those two methods, YouTube or Discord. And right now, where, wherever you're watching this from, say hello to somebody on the, the YouTube chat or say hello to somebody on the Discord server. Make sure to let them know where you're watching from. Maybe even a fun fact about you or something that happened this week that you can um, encourage somebody for. I can tell you a fun fact. Next week's my birthday. That's my fun fact for you. Next week's my birthday. And so... Um, maybe, you know, you don't have to say happy birthday or all stuff like that. Well, I mean, you could, but, you know, but, you know, like say something about you or maybe something that, Hey, Hey friends, this is something you can be praying for, for me as we're going at getting ready for this week. Here's a need I have. Can you be praying for that? And let's use the chat in both spaces, discord or YouTube to encourage, um, one another. Another way that we want to be an encouraging community to one another is spending time together. And if you receive our... Um, regular weekly mail out. Sometimes there's two weeks, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes there's none a week, and then we kind of double up because this guy. Um, but if you would have seen our mail outs for this week, you would have seen that there was a link for a survey that you could take. And the survey pretty well says, um, we want to make sure that we are doing right by us as a community. We want to be um, building community together. We want to be building one another up in our faith, we want to be able to encourage one another. And so we want to look at ways we can do that. And so it's a couple of special questions there, simple questions. I mean, they are special, but simple questions about um, if we, would it help us as a community if we had times of prayer together? And if somebody among us in our community would be willing to lead those times of prayer, because like a church that we meet in person, it can't be, it's never great if it's only one person doing everything, but it really is us as a community doing ministry together. And so maybe you have the gift of prayer and of discipleship in leading that way. And would you be willing to give once a month or once every two months to lead a prayer experience um, for our online community? And there's also um, whether or not there's time for us as a, as a community to meet together in, in online for just a, a social gathering, to spend time getting to know one another, whether it's games or finding something that of, of common ground to be able to do together. We want to know if that, that would be beneficial to our community too. And then the last question we ask is um, whether or not it'd be helpful for us as a community to have Matt Miles uh, join us as well. He is our interim um, senior director. And as you know, as we have been moving towards a, a network paradigm as a church, that also affects us as, as an online community, as an online church. And so to have Matt come in and simply... One, let us know what's going on from his perspective, but then also for us to just be able to get to know Kim and to spend time with Kim. So those are the questions that are on the survey. And so I would ask that if you would take a few moments of your time to answer that survey, thank you to the five of you so far who have answered that. There's probably more by the time that, you know, but like, thank you so much for those of you who have answered. Um, but we would love to be able to have as many of us in our community as possible because that will give us a great benchmark to kind of know what our next steps are moving forward. Which way should we be moving towards as a community? And speaking of which way, our new series on the road to Easter is titled The Way. And it kicks off 
today. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, we have a, a great time of teaching and, and learning in group format this morning. It's going to be something that is going to be really um, experiential um, and encouraging for us as a community. And so I, I, I hope that as we're listening, that we're listening um, with an open heart as well as open ears to be able to hear what the Spirit would say to us as we are moving forward on the way of Jesus as a online church community. So make sure to be paying attention to that uh, because we want to be able to to give of our best as, as a community, especially us who are here on this online church. We want to be able to give of our best to the broader Meeting House family. Um, and speaking of giving, look at me with these little tie-ins all the way through. Uh, we're going to move into our time of, of giving now. And we've done this before, um, but I would ask you to um, symbolically... Um, take take your hands and imagine that you have something in your hand that you're wanting to get. And I just want you to kind of hold hold your hand out like this. And then symbolically just say, God, what is in my hand, I open up and I give to you. You can do that. Take just kind of symbolically. Maybe it's, it's your finances. It's your time. It's your family. It's your job. It's your lack of a job. It's your it's your it's your want. Whatever it is, hold that in your hand. And then pause for a moment, and then open your hand. And say, God, what is in my hands? I give to you. When we give out of our finances, that's what we're doing. We are taking what's in our hand, taking what's in our bank account, taking what's in our pocket, and we are literally saying, God, what I have in my hand, what I've been given, I give back to you. And the act of worship it extends our faith. It extends our trust and it extends the kingdom. And my encouragement to you is that you don't hold too tightly to the things that you've been given, but instead hold it loosely in order to give it back to him so that he can multiply that and extend it well beyond what we'd be able to do. I'm going to pray real quickly and then we're going to go into our time of, of musical worship together. God, I thank you that you have given to us so much. And in light of that, Lord, we open our hands over to you. We give back to you what is rightfully yours. May our time of, of giving only be um, deepened by our time of worship as we sing about how you are the firm foundation, as we sing about how everything that we need is in you. Lord, may we be reminded of that truth as we, as we sing, as we go into our time of teaching. In your name, amen. Good morning and welcome to The Meeting House. You know, we come to church to learn and to receive, but also to be together, to get to worship together and praise together, no matter where we're coming from, no matter what's happening in our lives, no matter what's happening later today. We get to be here together. We get to be in God's presence, and we get to praise him and thank him for who he is and what he's doing. So if you're able, let's stand and do that together. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. And I've still got joy in chaos. And I've got peace.
Christ alone, my hope 
This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter.
Grant me, O Lord my God, a mind to know you, a heart to seek you, wisdom to find you, conduct pleasing to you, faithful perseverance in waiting for you, and a hope of finally embracing you. Amen. Thomas Aquinas I am the way, Jesus. The way of Jesus cannot be imposed or mapped. It requires an active participation in following Jesus as he leads us through sometimes strange and unfamiliar territory, in circumstances that become clear only in the hesitations and questionings, in the pauses and reflections where we engage in prayerful conversation with one another and with him. Eugene H. Peterson I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus Your desire for more of God than you have right now, your longing for love, your need for deeper levels of spiritual transformation than you have experienced so far is the truest thing about you. You might think that your woundedness or your sinfulness is the truest thing about you, or that your giftedness or your personality type or your job title or your identity as husband or wife, mother or father somehow defines you. But in reality, it is your desire for God and your capacity to reach for more of God than you have right now that is the deepest essence of who you are. Ruth Haley Barton He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus My deepest awareness of myself is that I am deeply loved by Jesus Christ, and I have done nothing to earn it or deserve it. Brennan Manning Come, follow me. Jesus Hey friends, whether you are joining us from our online community or one of our Meeting House churches or somewhere else, we are so glad you're with us for the first week in a new series called The Way. I'm excited about this. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I'm with some amazing friends that I have the privilege of being together with that I'm going to introduce to you. But first, I want to invite us to go on a time warp back in history to a powerful and pivotal moment in time. Let's go back together to the moment when Jesus' ministry started to germinate into a movement. So Jesus has been baptized. He's been fasting in the wilderness, led by the Spirit for 40 days. He was tempted by Satan during that time. Side note, Jesus won, Satan zero. Love that. He comes out of this time. The early parts of the Gospels tell us he's already attracting crowds as he's teaching. But true to his relational, never-stuck-in-one-place self, What does Jesus do next? He starts multiplying this movement through relationship. And that's where we pick up the story. So we're going to dive right into scripture today, reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat, and he taught the crowds from there. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it's deeper, and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, You'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. I love this story 
the setting here is just so rich with encouragement and learning for us. So the context is that this would have been a group of ragtag fishermen, a very prototypical commoner trade in ancient Israel at the time. Everyday people that have been up all night working, they're in the morning now fixing their nets, wondering what's gonna happen next. The setting here to me is so universally applicable and poignant, even if we're not all fishers, there's something we can relate to here. Jesus is seeing ordinary folk like you and me. He's calling them out of their lackluster, everyday, stuck in monotony, experiencing failure, dejection, wondering about money and materiality and what's coming next lives into a preferred future. He's infusing them with purpose and with mission. And he's calling them and inviting them to follow him into what's next. And contrary to how this story might feel as we read the arc of it, the climax isn't actually the miracle of Jesus producing the fish in the net. That's actually a, a setup. That's a demonstration of God's power and provision and promise to us. But why? So that he can infuse us with purpose and call us on a journey, on a wild adventure of transformation to follow him. So the climax is actually Jesus saying, don't be afraid. I've got purpose for you and I'm here with you in it. I'm taking you fishing for people. I'm calling you into a way to follow me. And what happens next isn't a metaphor or a riddle, is it? They actually get up and go. They follow him right then and right there physically. And it's not just to a seminar or a Bible study. They're following Jesus into that wild transformational journey, that adventure where they don't actually know where it's leading, but they're trusting that they can follow Jesus where he's headed. And so right out of the gates, we see that this movement that Jesus is starting and that is still true today is about so much more than just history lessons or theology classes or ideology. It actually is an invitation to a way, a transformation transformational journey that's centered on a person, it's infused with purpose, and it's experienced in community. A transformational journey centered on a person, infused with purpose, and experienced in community. And the early followers of Jesus actually called it that. They called it a way, meaning a couple of things, a, a way of life, a lifestyle of apprenticeship under Jesus that actually becomes more than that. It becomes transformation, a, a pickling of our souls in a good way under the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's also a way in that it's a, a route, a destination. It's going somewhere, or in this case, towards someone, towards Jesus. And what we see in this opening scene of the movement, the framework that Jesus is putting in place, the encouragement for us is that that's just as true today as it was then. Jesus is a God who sees us. He meets us where we're at in our everyday lives. The, the boredom, the frustration, the anxiety, the stuckness, the joy, the celebration, the hope, all of it. He meets us right there. He reminds us of his abundance, his provision, his power, his promise. He tells us not to be afraid because, frankly, he knows that it can be scary. And then what does he do? He infuses us with purpose and meaning and invites us to follow on a wild journey of transformation. So these truths are, are true for us individually, but they're also true for us together. Throughout the New Testament, this word ecclesia in Greek is used to symbolize and to represent a gathering of people that are coming together with a purpose. And we translate that into the word church. We are a gathering of people, not just an institution or a building. We are a gathering of people together around Jesus with a purpose. And these truths apply to us at that level as well. And we've spent some time over the last year, if you've been journeying with us, you know this, listening to the Holy Spirit together to identify what is our Jesus way forward. There's only one Jesus way, but what does it look like for us here and now at our moment in time where we are in the world? And I've never been so encouraged at the way that we've locked arms together imperfectly and with challenge to listen to the Holy Spirit and start learning what it means to follow him towards Jesus in our context for the next generation of our church. And what's emerged through that is this beautiful native and familiar, but also aspirational and challenging call for us to become something that's being made new, for us to become Jesus-centered, spirit-led, peacemaking communities on mission together. 
Jesus-centered, spirit-led, peacemaking communities on mission together. And I wonder what you hear in that. What I hear in that is a call to anchor myself and ourselves as an ecclesia in the life and love and lordship of Jesus. Following the Holy Spirit out on mission to bring peace to a world that is desperate for it. To be part of his ministry of reconciliation. God is reconciling all things to him and us to one another. To participate in that bringing light into the darkness, bringing healing into the brokenness of our world, not as those who have mastered it, but as those who need it just as desperately as the ones we're sharing it with. I think of it as a call for us to be agents of both bringing the good news, the gospel that moves and goes, but also the good works of the kingdom, the good news and the good works. Discipling one another in tight-knit communities that are radically welcoming. Why? So that we can go out on that mission and frankly be the kind of churches that our neighborhoods would desperately miss if we weren't there. Mm. That that vision gets me fired up. That's what I hear in what our church has discerned about our way forward. And we feel like we need to do that by becoming something that looks a bit different, a network of local churches. Why? So that we can empower one another at the fingertips of our movement where the gospel manifests, where the kingdom manifests, which is locally in relationships That's where God is at work, in our communities and in our cities. Yet connected with and supported by a broader family where we share values, we share encouragement, we share resources, we share learning together. So this series that we're embarking upon, we're calling The Way as an opportunity to look at this vision that God is giving us and kind of biopsy it and hold little pieces of it up to the light and say, what what do those pieces mean for us individually as Christ followers and for us as an ecclesia? a gathering of the body of Christ together with a purpose. And so this week, we have the privilege of introducing this series to you, and I can't wait to introduce my friends as part of this conversation today. Next week, we're going to talk about compassion and Jesus' call to love the poor and serve the marginalized and how that's core to who we are. The week after that, we're going to talk about peacemaking, then listening to the Spirit, and we culminate in Easter, celebrating all things Jesus, his death and resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be a good few weeks. We're glad you're with us. And we hope that you feel encouragement and invitation, but more than anything, that we all feel rooted in the way of Jesus and closer to understanding what that looks like for us in our lives individually and as a church. So I keep saying I have these amazing friends with me, and it's time to introduce them. This is a new era and a new season for us as a church, and part of that, it means many things, but one of the things that it means is celebrating a new transition board of overseers that are helping to serve and provide leadership alongside our church through this series of transformation. Tanya Blenkern from our Perry Sound Church community is our new transition board chair, which is such a privilege to work with you, Tanya. And Brent Babcock, who I've known for many years, is our vice chair. We thought this would be a great opportunity for you to get to know a couple of the people that are serving sacrificially in these roles in our community. So I'm really thrilled to be here with you both. Welcome. Thank you. It's a privilege, indeed. So let's get to know you a little bit. We were just talking about how Jesus calls us from our everyday lives into his story. I'd love for both of you just to share a little bit about your story. How did you end up here? And what do you see your role being in the role of this transition board in the season that we're in as a church? So why don't we start with you, Tanya? Sure, thank you. Um, So my name's Tanya, as Matt said, and I'm from the Meeting House Perry Sound. So shout out Perry Sound. Um, My husband and I actually live about 30 minutes north of Perry Sound in a small community called Point of Arrow, and we've made that place home for, gosh, 28 years, roughly. Um, Our community, our church, became a meeting house site in 2009. And at that time, um, I was pretty active in our business and really consumed with what life looked like there. And I felt um, Jesus really pushing me and nudging me to get involved in this new thing that was the meeting house, but wasn't sure where the time was going to be for that. Lo and behold, I found myself on staff as KidMax coordinator, mm-hmm. and that was a surprise and awesome, and uh, was helping to also set up a new ministry um, for youth leadership development, which was just an incredible gift to me, um, but to our community as well, and it really bound us together, and it was awesome. It was so fabulous. And during that time, um, you know, it always was amazing to me at uh, 
just how it was possible to find the capacity to be able to show up and do this. And honestly, every single day, every single Sunday, it was only because of the Holy Spirit. Um, anybody who's served in ministry knows that things can be a little bit chaotic at times and you don't know what's going to be thrown at you and yet it all works out. Was it smooth sailing every week? No, right? but yes, but no. Um, so yeah, those years were fabulous, and we felt the Holy Spirit working deeply in our community during that time. Um, and we were also bridging relationships outside of what we would have called our regular um, community. So we are surrounded by five wonderful First Nations communities, and we also do church in a great place called The Hub with our hub neighbors who are um, one of our not-for-profit communities in Perry Sound. And so we've got a great opportunity to connect and meet with all kinds of folks and share the good news of Jesus. As the years kind of progressed for me though, um, for lots of reasons, I stayed committed and I stayed uh, regular in my attendance to home church and, and participating, but I was no longer really engaged. Mm. Um, I would kind of moved back, um, got really focused on our business and launching our kids into adulthood and things had really shifted for me and I was doing good things. I was involved in boards that um, served child and youth mental health in our community and community economic development, but I wasn't using my gifts in our church in that same way. And there was definitely something missing. Um, there was a disconnection, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. Last summer, our pastor Amanda asked me to have coffee with her, and I thought we were just getting together to reconnect, but actually she wanted to invite me to participate in the network development team. And that invitation really started the re-engagement process for mm. me. Um, at first, when she brought it up, um, I was a little surprised, and then also surprised that my reaction was so good. I was starting to feel curious about what this could mean and how I could learn more and how I could participate and how, what could be involved in this. Um, and then as I met you and learned what this network development team was all about, and really your passion for um, really enabling our communities to be able to um, live out the gospel on the ground and the grassroots and that we weren't just looking at creating a structure, but that we were looking at a new way of doing church. I got so excited I needed to run through town and scream and yell and I hadn't felt that way in years. I think I remember that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I think what's, what's been funny for my husband in all of this is um, with every step, whether it's been the involvement with the network development team or then the opportunity to join the transition board, I've loved every moment of the learning and the time and the opportunity and the chance to be together and the cultivation and creation of what's coming next. And I honestly believe that that energy and that invigoration in my life has to come from the Holy Spirit and has to come from the fact that I said yes to an invitation mm -hmm. to re-engage. So, that's how that's I found what, myself here. That's what stands out to me is you're on this journey and there's a milestone there. There's, a, there's an inflection point where someone invited you mm -hmm. to respond to a call. Mm -hmm. And kudos to you. you. You heeded that invitation and here you are today. Yeah. And it's a, a blessing to our church. How about you, Brent? How did your story bring you here? Well, it's interesting, Matt. Uh, I take many walks during the day each week. And just a few days ago, I was thinking about this very question. How did, how did we get here? And it started in uh, 2006, early. We had moved to downtown Toronto. We needed a church to attend. Uh, was familiar with the meeting house, but up until that point, never geographically in a place where it made sense to attend. So we uh, found out that the downtown Toronto site had just opened in the fall before. So we walked over to Scotiabank Theatre. We were immediately welcomed and greeted warmly. Uh, it wasn't uh, lost on us that we were among the only gray hair in the building at the time. But uh, those young kids, our own kids' age, just embraced us and it was just a, a great experience. And I remember saying to Carol, this feels like home. We want to get involved, but we want to be behind the scenes so that we can just support people and leadership and just kind of stay in the background. That's what I think would be perfect. But this really feels like home. God has got an amazing sense of humor. Your mistake was saying that out loud. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Looking back over those years since 2006, being an invited to various roles as a volunteer, and then the privilege of uh, coming on staff as a half-time associate pastor in downtown Toronto, um, 
transitioning out of that role down to the Sandbanks community. Shout out to Sandbanks. We've got a great growing community down there, very supportive. Um, I just can't believe how God has allowed all those experiences to culminate in such a time as this. Uh, preparing uh, myself and Carol, our family, for this type of service has been, uh, has been awesome. Um, yeah, it's just uh, humbling to be in this position right now. It was uh, after stepping down as the volunteer lead at Sandbanks uh, in August of 22, I began searching and began asking the Lord, so what's next? Where do you want me to position myself? And I was praying in that uh, vein. And one day I opened up my emails and got an email from an old friend who, she's not old, but she was a part of our King Young Home Church in downtown Toronto. And just a random email, something to the effect, they need you. And I said, what are you talking about? And it was the board they could use, in her estimation, somebody with my background and experience. So I put my hand up and here we are. So Again. there's that call, there's that invitational call. Invitational Again, call. Right? Historically, God often speaks to me through community, through other people, not necessarily loud voices directly in my head, and this was one of those experiences. That's awesome. Thank you both for sharing vulnerably about your stories. I love how they're both different, but there's parallels there for sure. So let's turn to the vision that we sense God calling us to as a church. Tanya, I love your sense of hope and excitement, yet your authenticity in that. Share with us a little bit what's on your heart, what resonates with you, what is it about the way forward that we sense Jesus calling us to that brings you hope? Hmm. I think there's so many elements, honestly, um, but one is just the, the starting point within our communities. And I feel like um, the opportunity to share the gospel with our neighbors and to do that in a real way and, and that that is um, what this mission is really about. It's about empowering us to, to focus on being Jesus-centered first in all that we're doing and that that's the most important thing. Um, but when I hear that whole way forward for us, it's, it's really about the part that made me most emotional was the peacemaking. Mm. And it's like I heard the words and no, none of the other words jumped off the page right off the bat. They were important, absolutely. But when you said peacemaking, it struck this chord inside of me that it just rang true. We need that so desperately and we know that and all of us do, whether it's globally or in our communities, in our own church, in our families, everywhere there's, there's disruption and chaos and people are broken. And the fact that we would love to be able to point to Jesus and peacemaking to be the whole rationale, that is who he was. He came to bring peace in everyone's life, to reconcile us back to God, um, that we could do that. We can show that we not because we have it figured out. You know, I mm -hmm. I don't have it figured out. In fact, ever since really focusing on this, I think about it every day. I think about it in every conversation. How could I be doing this better right now? And so it's highlighted for me in in such a profound way how it it weaves into our whole lives. Mm -hmm. And then together. So. Right. Together is, I mean, anyone who knows me, I'm not a singular human and everything that I love and, and is driven by is what we can do together because I believe we're stronger in, the, in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I had a really good friend who lives in a neighboring community, um, Shawanaga First Nation. She's an elder there and um, she once gave me a braided sweet grass and she was telling me how important braids were to her in her story. And the reason was because the strength of that braid together is so many more times stronger than any straight strand of hair. And that a strand of hair is easily torn, broken, or lost, but a braid bound together could do anything. And so I think about you know, the Trinity, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus. I think about our community. Um, I think about us in that story, and I feel like we're, we're a braid that's woven together, that we're gonna be so much stronger because of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, I love it. Brent, you've been around our church for a long time. 
it's hard, I think maybe especially as a Christian, not to get entrenched in our ways and our expectations of what it means to be part of a church community. You could have packed it up, headed home. You could have been disillusioned and taken a left turn. You didn't do that. Why? What is it that you sense that's different or refreshing or hopeful in the way that we're being called by Jesus right now in this moment? It's a great question, Matt. Uh, let me start with a recent experience. We had the privilege of visiting our kids in Kitchener-Waterloo a few weeks ago, and we took the opportunity to stop in and uh, visit the Kitchener-Waterloo site. So shout out to Kitchener-Waterloo. We walked into the school that Sunday morning, and we saw some friends that we had uh, known from years past, an older couple like ourselves, who have been faithfully serving, and we hadn't seen them in many, many years. And uh, there was nobody else coming in at the same time, so she took an opportunity to kind of share with us and what was on their heart and just the agony of when things blew up a couple years ago and, and seeing so many people just walk away and, and they were discouraged and not sure what to do. So they went to the Lord in prayer and came back with a specific message that almost brought me to tears. And that message was, stay and pray. And that resounded so significantly with Carol and I as we were there, later chatting with uh, Daryl and uh, uh, Max, who's on our overseer's board uh, from that site. It was just encouraging to see so much energy uh, in that site, uh, grasping this new vision. Daryl spoke locally that Sunday, a great message, and it was just a real encouragement. And that's what we've tried to do. We wanted to stay. We wanted to be a part of this we see uh, just a whole new level of transparency, a whole new level of engagement. Uh, Tanya, you mentioned the network development team, and just to see those number of people come together over six, eight months uh, from all of the different sites, all lay people coming together and reimagining what church could be. Um, yeah just the opportunity to play a small part of this go forward with engaged, excited people, all wanting to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's, I mean, we've talked about Jesus, obviously a lot. We've talked about the Holy Spirit on and off over our history, but I cannot remember a time where we've had that much emphasis on that going forward. Uh, we've heard our people ask for that, and I'm excited that we're actually starting to Amen. So Move good. down that mm -hmm. path now. So good. So as we think about the people in our communities mm -hmm. sitting on the proverbial shore, mending their nets, maybe there's a mix of the same things that Simon was feeling at the time. Discouragement, dejection, maybe there's indifference, boredom, defeat, skepticism, joy, hope, excitement, yet curiosity. What's the invitation? What's the invitation to the shore sitters in our community, to the members of our ecclesia at this point in time? I think what I would say is, I see you. Hmm. I see you sitting on the shore. I was sitting right beside you. Hmm. And I want to invite you to join us because we need you. We need your gifts. We need your talents. We need your enthusiasm. Um, we're stronger together. And I would like to be that voice that says, please come join us in this way. Um, it takes a risk to step out in faith. It takes, uh, mm -hmm. you need to take a risk to lean in and say yes. But it's always worth it, yeah. every single time. And it's hard when you're sitting on the shore to believe that to be true. But the disciples did. Yeah. And, and that, there isn't a better example. Can I read a scripture before I answer the question? I think we'll allow that. I think that's, we will. That's appropriate? Just this once. I want to read from uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 from the message. And this was a theme that Nate Vosser, for those of you who remember Nate and myself, when we were downtown Toronto years ago, you would remember that. This was a theme we had when we launched One Fall, and I think it's still valid today. It goes, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. 
Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And I would say to those who have left, we miss you. We recognize without judgment that people have left for different reasons. And we just trust that they've plugged in and are, and are ministering and benefiting the kingdom. But we also believe that there's a number of people, and it might be you this morning that are watching online or you've, you've disengaged from your site, but you haven't left. You haven't plugged in somewhere else. And I would simply say to you, look back at those words of, of Paul in Romans 1 and 2 and catch that vision God doesn't need our expertise. He just needs what we can bring to the table and offer to him. And my prayer would be that our community would catch this new vision, would be excited, and would come back and partner with us, mm. partner with God, and move this ministry forward. Awesome. What a privilege to share this space with you and to serve shoulder to shoulder with both of you and so many others in this season. Mm. I'd love to end our time together with some Bible trivia. <laughs> So, here's a question. Who does scripture refer to as the pillar and foundation of truth? Now, a bunch of you just said Jesus, because that's the right answer to every question. But what if I told you the answer was you, and you, and me, and you, and us together, this thing called the Ecclesia? 1 Timothy 3.15 says, This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of truth. What we're doing here matters. This is God's plan A in the world, is working through us in partnership, in relationship together as an ecclesia, a body of people gathered together with a purpose. And how we respond makes a difference. And I'm so encouraged that just like we saw when Jesus called his disciples in that fragile moment of precarity, those aren't moments for us to be afraid. Jesus tells us that himself. I know it's scary, but you don't need to be afraid. Instead, it's a rally point for us to put our trust in him, to put all of our dependence in God, and to commit to following where he's leading us. And that feels like such an important truth for us in this moment. I'd love to share a benediction with us as we head out for the rest of our day from Romans 15, verses 5 and 6. A benediction, a blessing to us, an invitation to the good work Jesus has before us. May God, who gives patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other. I love that picture. As is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Thank you so much, Matt, Tanya, and Brent, for, for walking us through the way, showing us the way, being the... Okay, I'll stop with the puns. All right. As you get ready to, to go on to whatever it is that you're going to do on this Sunday or whatever you, whenever you're watching this, a couple of reminders for you. One, we would love to carry this forward in home church. Home church is a great way to expand the thought, to expand the ideas of what are shared um, on Sundays. And so you can go on our website and search the words online community, and you can then find uh, the home church that meets um, at the right time and space for you. We'd love for you to be a part of that community to grow your faith and grow in community together. We mentioned it at the beginning of our of our online um, gathering. Our Discord server is open all the time. Every day, there's always somebody there doing something, saying something, and we'd love for you to add to that stew. So be there for that. Our Wednesday stream at 7 o'clock, our teachers, they pre-record the teaching and they give chance for you to be able to ask questions that might actually affect the following week. Be there, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. It's always a, a, a great time. And once again, please, please, please respond to that survey. It'd be great for us to be able to plan ahead for the future so we can make a way. I said, I'm sorry, that's the last one. 
uh, for, for you and I to be in closer contact together. Until the next time, my friends, have a great week in Jesus, and we'll see you next time. Grace and peace, y'all.